The last M3 had a straight six engine. This has a four litre V8. But don't think for a minute it's become a big, lazy muscle car. Yes, it's a big V8, but it revs at 8,300 RPM. It's such a screamer. That said, it is softer than the old car and more forgiving, but it's also noticeably faster and cleverer. You can actually change the feel of the car and the performance on the iDrive control system. Meanwhile, the M differential gets busy at the back to keep the power going to exactly the right place at exactly the right time. Sometimes it'll even lock the rear wheels together so you can pull spectacular tail slides, even if your fists are made of ham. I love this car. Get out of the way! That'll be Jeremy, then. Here I come! This is Mercedes' answer to the M3. It's the AMG C-Class, and it's not a car. It's a complete animal! <laughs> oh, Christ! You don't really drive this car. You cling on for dear life. Sure, the new M3 has a top-notch conventional weapon under the bonnet, but this... this has a nuke. It's a 6.2-litre V8. Now, it's not the full, fat 6.2 they put in their bigger cars, but even this semi-skimmed version has 450 brake horsepower. So the oomph is as phenomenal as the noise it makes. <laughs> It's not only louder, more powerful and more exciting than the M3, but it's simpler as well. It even has an automatic gearbox. I will admit, however, that there are one or two things I'm not sure about. It's not a very pretty car. I don't like the way Merck has copied BMW's iDrive system. Their old control centre was better. It was easier to use. And then, rising above all this, is the problem with the traction control. When it's on, it's constantly interfering every time you go near the throttle. Eventually, of course, you become impatient and turn it off. But be advised, if you do that, you'd better be awake. Oh, so Daisy. I've got it. There we are. Oh, dear, no. This is just an axe murderer with headlights. And I absolutely adore it. This is mental. Jeremy, there's more to life than a big, shouty engine. No, there isn't. There is. I'm sorry, Richard, but the whole point of an M3 is that you can't really tell it isn't an ordinary BMW. Look at this, it's got M3 written here, it's got grooves, it's got, mo it's got more trinkets on it than a pensioner's mantelpiece. I'm sorry, you cannot pitch up in your sparkly disco glitter ball. Nobody ever said a Mercedes had to be restrained. Tell me you like the chrome, honestly. I don't like the chrome very much. Well, but that's all there is. Sunshine roof? Oh, you haven't got... Don't what need the one. hell? What? What's this? Carbon fibre. Carbon fibre carbon. roof. It's to keep the centre of gravity low because it keeps the weight down in the car. It's light, that helps the balance. That's why this is such a good car. Makes you look like a cock. Oh, like your chrome is going to help. Both of those cars are ostentatious and ghastly. Which is why, if you want a small, fast German saloon, you'd have one of these. It's an Audi RS4. It may have been around for a couple of years now, but I have to say, it's still marvellous. It has a 4.2-litre V8, which produces the same power as Hammond's M3, but without drawing quite so much attention to itself. The exhaust note is like a tribute to Pavarotti. Listen to this. Sonorous. You see, it's not like that look-at-me racket coming out of the back of Jeremy's 
idiotic Mercedes. And in any case, why would you want a car that's trying to kill you? And unlike Hammond's BMW, it isn't smothered in gaudy tinsel. It's quiet, it's discreet. It's got absolutely nothing to prove. It's sort of at home with Andy McNabb. The ride is good, the four-wheel drive system keeps you out of the crash barriers, and you don't need an IT qualification to operate it. Well, hey. Sancho, how many gears have you got? Six. Seven. So that's one better. That's too many. What do you mean it's too... It's it two. is, actually. Oh, You're right. right. Has the captain arrived? I believe so. In an Audi. This Audi is a very, very good car. Couldn't agree with you more. I remember when I drove this a couple of years ago, I actually believed that that was one of the greatest engines ever made. But you cannot ignore the engine in that Mercedes. You just can't. Nobody saw a 6.2 litre. With 6.3 written on the side. That's just history. Is it a 6.2? Yes. It says 6.3 on it. Yes, because that's history and tradition. It's lying. just a random number. It isn't. It's... Instead of bickering, we decided to get scientific and discuss practicality. First things first, I'll just get in the back. Ah, yes, all right, there is, there is a four-door version coming. And the rear legroom is... Plentiful. Pitiful. The Audi. I'd expect... And, oh, dearie me, if we pop this seat into my driving position... Well, that's hardly a fair test. <laughs> what, do you want to hop in, Richard? Yeah, I'd love to. Oh, I can't. I've got legs. We could have argued all day, but when it comes to practicality, the facts are the facts. The Mercedes has the biggest engine, the most gears, the most space in the front, the most space in the back, and the biggest boot. The end. After this momentous victory for the Mercedes, I decided we should have a drag race. I'm actually, for the first time in one of our drag races, genuinely tense about this. I want this car to win. Don't lose. Don't lose, mad car. I'll take the handbrake off. That'll increase my chances. I'm not going to win this, I'm going to humiliate them. Despite its four-wheel drive system, the Audi took the lead. I'm winning, I'm winning. And then lost it. Come on, come on! Come on, baby, come on! How did that happen? Oh, rock and roll! No, no, no! Oh, that's a pointless and irrelevant test.